We're going to take a minute and talk to Chris Meany of the Fantasy Sports Network, give you some DFS insight, guys, he likes this week. The Daily Dose. All right, the fantasy footballers are excited, as usual, to welcome in Chris Meany of the Fantasy Sports Network, dropping some DFS knowledge on our listeners. How you doing, Chris? Not too bad, guys. Uh, ready to rock after a rough week 10. <laughs> yes. That was a, uh, a crazy week. I mean, uh, Mike isn't here to kind of uh, ask his questions. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start real fast with the one that's on the top of Mike's mind. And it's, uh, okay. it, is Kristen Michael a good pickup this week in <laughs> DFS? <laughs> yeah, no, this guy's released now. He's done. <laughs> I know, but I don't want to let Mike live it down, and so I want to bring it up on as many contexts <laughs> as I can. Every show, every interview, that's it's just it's our new thing we do. Yes, yeah, Mike. It, it, it's 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 funny, guys. Uh, Michael, just a really hot topic, right? When this guy was picked up by the Cowboys, everybody wanted him, um, but again, he just is a big disappointment. He's the best uh, future running back prospect discussion piece. That That's all he's ever yeah. been, and I don't know how many fantasy points you get for that, but he's been very good at that before. <laughs> so, but we'll get... Yeah, for sure. He's out, of my, he's out of my lineups. Yeah, okay. So, hot tip. No Christy Michael this week. <laughs> but let's actually focus on the, uh, the Week 11 DFS plays here. Who are the big budget guys you have confidence in spending the money on this week? Uh, I think at the quarterback position, it's Cam Newton for me. And you know what? I haven't given this guy enough credit because, you know, at the start of the year, I obviously didn't like his weapons with Calvin Benjamin going down again. I just, you know, I wasn't really a big fan of, of Ginn and, and Funches. And even though Funches is kind of starting to come around, it's just Cam's been so consistent. I mean, last week, 20 fantasy points. The week before that, 34, 19, 16, 21, 16, 29, 28. It seems like his floor is right around the 16 to 19 mark, and that's perfectly fine for a quarterback. So I'm willing to pay up for him at $8,600 against Washington. Uh, I'm not willing to pay up for Tom Brady. I'm not going to go that way against Aaron Rodgers. He let me down too many times, so I'm off Aaron Rodgers, although it could be a sneaky play because, you know, uh, sometimes I find in DFS, you know, when they have bad weeks, people don't want them anymore. Nobody wants Andy Dalton this week. I know it's a tough matchup, but nobody wants him because he couldn't do anything against Houston. And I'm actually fine with rolling out Andy Dalton, maybe not in a cash game, but in a, in a tournament play at $7,900. I know it's a little tough against Arizona, and he was really disappointing last week, but he still has a lot of weapons around there. So I'm willing to pay up for Andy Dalton. My favorite quarterback, again, uh, and guys, I feel like I just always say this to you guys, but Derek Carr. I mean, I love Derek Carr against Detroit. He's a nice price at $7,700. He's tied for first in, with seven deep touchdown passes. It's passes over 20-plus yards. He's got great weapons in Cooper and Crabtree. Uh, Crabtree has 16 looks over 20-plus yards. Cooper only four. Crabtree getting targeted more in the red zone than Cooper. Uh, but I love Crabtree again this week. And going up against Detroit, like I mentioned, just the third most fantasy points against the quarterback. So I'm willing to go that way for Derek Carr. And it's just as we saw last week, if you can find a guy under $8,000 who can get you at least 20 points, then you're kind of laughing from that quarterback position. I mean, last week it was Cousins. I don't suggest Cousins again this week. I think we just know to pick on that same secondary. But Derek Carr last week, 19 points in what was kind of a down game from him. And the week before that, 27 FanDuel points, 29, 22. He has over 1,200 yards and 13 TDs over his last four games. Yeah. So from the quarterback position, I love Derek Carr. Yeah, I, what do you think about a Car crabtree stack? Because we were talking in the studio a little bit with Darius Slay lined up on Cooper and shadowing him. Crabtree, we, we really like him as well. So would you? what's your thoughts on the stack? Because I know we've gone back and forth on some of the winners have had those stacks. What do you think about those guys this week as a stack? Yeah, I love Crabtree. I mean, I, Crabtree and Carr are going to be in a lot of my lineups this week for sure. Uh, a little bit of a down week, of course. Only 7.5 Fando points last week. He still had 55 yards, four catches. But before that, I mean, the guy was just, you know, raking in a lot of targets. Had back-to-back 100-yard -back games. He's got four touchdowns in his last four games. So I do like the stack a lot. I'm willing to to roll with Crabtree for sure. Uh, from the other wide receiver position, there's a lot of guys I like that are just kind of undervalued. Obviously, Amendola has a bigger role with New England Patriots this week only $6,100. That one 
game against Buffalo earlier in the year, Edelman had 19 targets. So I wonder where all those targets are going to go. Sure, Gronk is going to get some. Uh, LaFell's obviously going to get some. But I like Amadola in a spot where last week we saw him get 10 catches. you got to remember, 0.5 per catch. So I like Amadola in that spot, too, and he's fairly cheap. Um, you know what? You want to take a long shot? Here's a long shot. Kenny Britt. I mean, this is not a, a cash play, uh, but a $5,300 against Baltimore's secondary. I know it's Case Keenum. He's not great, but he can't be worse than Nick Foles. <laughs> Watching a lot of games here in the office and not glued to Rams games, although I do love Gurley, but I just noticed that every single game, St. Louis takes about two or three shots downfield to Kenny Britt, and Foles has just not been able to connect. So uh, Case Keenum, also known to throw some interceptions here and there, but I think that there's certainly a shot for some upside in, in a big tournament play where Kenny Britt could be a, a sneaky, sneaky play. Yeah, I like that. And and Jason made the point on the show earlier uh, yesterday, just the fact that, okay, Foles is gone. This has to just be an upgrade. You just kind of have to be because you eight straight games of under 200 yards and just not no efficiency from Foles at, whatsoever. At the worst, it cannot be a downgrade. You can't <laughs> sit there and go, oh, no, you know, things are going to get worse. Um, you know the guy yeah. that – that I like a middle middle of the tier guy that that I see just a value. What do you think of Shark Kendrick West and his his uh, Fanduel price right now? Is is that right? Is it forty five hundred? West West is seventy one. Oh, okay. And Char- I'm I'm with you. Shark Kendrick West has been. I mean, he passed the test last week when he went up against Denver. Nobody wanted this guy. And the Sunday Million on Fanduel, I believe his ownership was one point six percent owned, and he went off uh, twenty nine Fanduel points against Denver. He's got forty nine over his last two games and sixty nine over his last three. And if we didn't like that matchup against Denver, we have to love it against San Diego this week. So I'm with you. Uh, yes, I love Shark Kendrick West at seventy one hundred dollars. Sticking with running backs. I'm willing to pay up for Freeman this week against the Colts. Uh, I like that a lot. McFadden, too, 105 touches over the last four games for Darren McFadden. You have to think that Romo back now has to help out McFadden a little bit. You don't have to run the ball all the time. He's only $6,800 and has also a nice matchup against Miami. Also willing to pay up for Adrian Peterson. He seems to be the only running back. Uh, you take a look at, I don't know what your guys' rankings were, but take a look at the top 15 running backs. A lot of them hurt or bust. Besides Adrian Peterson, he seems to be consistently getting it done. The knock on him is not finding the end zone. But against Green Bay this week, $8,900 also willing to pay up for him. Yeah, yeah. Peterson is one of those guys, when you look at the total carry numbers too this year, there's a giant gap between the second, third, fourth guys and Peterson. He's up almost 30 carries or more ahead of everybody else. So you know the workload's there. And then obviously he's Adrian Peterson. He can break the long touch that at any time. So that, that makes it worth it. Um, is there any other any other bargains we should know about? Um, you know what? I was looking at Aiken. Aiken's still worth it. I mean, it's a tough matchup against St. Louis, $5,900. This guy did get 14 targets last week, only reeled in half of them. Uh, Givens is another sneaky little play, a little revenge game against the Rams, $4,500, found the end zone. Between him and Aiken, they had 21 targets. There's really just not a lot of, of receiving options there in Baltimore. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot. Maybe if you do want to go Dalton, you want to be contrarian. Like I said, it is a little bit of a tough matchup. Uh, you have to think uh, Patrick Peterson is going to shadow AJ Green. So maybe Marv Jones, Marvin Jones at $5,400 against Arizona. Again, it's a tough matchup yeah. and it could be a sneaky play uh, because of, you know, he had a down week last time. So sometimes I like to try to find these guys where people are going to be off of them because they're coming off bad weeks. I like yeah. Ebron dropping a lot of balls lately, but I like the matchup against Oakland. They can't cover tight ends. And finally, Jason Witten, now that Romo's back, Witten can be a factor. I noticed last week, Ertz and Selleck for Philadelphia, two tight ends. They had 14 targets, 11 catches, and 202 yards against Miami. So Witten, if Romo has any rest at all, he can always go to his BFF and just throw it to Witten for eight or nine yards every single time. Really like the Witten play. He was almost my start of the week uh, this week as well. And I'm glad you brought up Cam right. Newton because the thing that people don't understand, and it's kind of shocking, you know, the top three scoring offenses in football, it's New England, it's Arizona, and then it's Carolina. Wow. It's Carolina, yeah. with, despite the weapons or what perceive what we perceive as inefficient or, I mean, uh, ineffective weapons, it's not the case. They're, they're extremely efficient. He gets in the end zone. So I'm, I'm glad you brought Newton up. We really appreciate you coming on the show yet again today and dropping some great knowledge for our listeners. Well, I'll have you back next week. Hey, hey man. Uh, my pleasure, guys. Uh, I love your show. And uh, anytime you guys want to have me on, more than willing. Absolutely. And you can follow him, uh, follow Chris on Twitter at Chris Meany. That's M E A N E Y. 
and uh, he'll answer your questions on there as well. So thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks, guys. Uh, enjoy the football this week and catch you next week. Will do. Take care.